In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a map book using data-driven pages in ArcMap 10. The first step is to launch ArcMap 10, uh, and in this case, I'm going to use create a map book for the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. So you first want to start out by adding all the layers that you'd like to appear in your map book. So for this example, I've used a boundary layer that I obtained from the U.S. Census Tiger website. Um, I've included high resolution imagery that I obtained from the state of South Dakota. This is one meter resolution aerial photography. I've included an updated land class layer for the Pine Ridge Reservation that I obtained from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. This is the most important layer since this is what I'm trying to make accessible to landowners on Pine Ridge. In the file properties for this layer, I set the symbology to differentiate between tribal lands and lands allotted to individual. Tribal lands are in yellow and individually allotted lands are in red. Lastly, I have a township layer that I obtained from the National Atlas website. I will use this layer as the index layer for my map book. That means that each page of the map book will encompass one township. After loading the map layers, you want to be sure to turn on any labels you'd like to appear in the map book. So I'm going to do that for townships. And I want the tract ID number for each parcel of land. And you'll notice that at this resolution the map seems quite cluttered, but um, when you zoom in, when, when it creates the map book, each township will be a page. And so it will look a lot less cluttered. But at this resolution it looks very cluttered. Okay, so to create your map book, you'll need to turn on the Data Driven Pages toolbar. You can do this under Customize, Toolbars, and then turn on Data Driven Pages. Right here. And what that does is it creates a toolbar over here. And a, this toolbar has five components. It has a setup for data-driven pages, a refresh for the data-driven pages, so once you change formatting you can update all the pages. Um, scroll arrows, so you can scroll through the different pages. A display window that shows which is the current page being viewed and a page text drop-down menu that will allow you to add dynamic text to each page. You can start creating your map book by enabling map book pages. And you do this under the setup. You click the check box. Next, you want to uh, specify your index layer. And uh, first you choose the data frame. So I've chosen just the default layers. I only have one data frame open, so I'm just going to use the layers. Next, you want to choose your index layer. And this is what each page will be based on. So in this case, I'm using Pine Ridge Townships. But you can really use any grid or any polygon layer as your index layer because um, I've just chosen townships because it, it makes sense because people often search for their lands and their legal descriptions are oftentimes in um, range and township. Next it's going to ask for a name field and this is the field that each page will be named. So since each page in, in my map book is going to be based on township I'm going to use the township name. And in the data table that's at, under label. I also want to sort my map book by uh, the township and range. So I will also choose the sort field as label. Then it's asking me if I want to sort ascending. Next there's some optional fields. You can choose the field that you want to rotate your tape your pages on or the layer. So if I for example if my uh, map book was following a stream or a pipeline, I could choose the that layer as the rotation layer and the each page will follow that stream bed the curves and contours of that. Next you can specify the spatial reference for different layers. I've left that blank because all my spatial reference are the same. 
Um, you can also choose a field for page numbers. So you can manually enter page numbers if you want that to override the sort field. And you can also specify what the start page number is. So say if your book has a, an opening or an index or an introduction, maybe four or five pages at the start, you can set that page to start on page five, and that's where your maps will appear. Okay, once you've done that, you can click OK, and it's going to create your data-driven pages. This may take some time depending on how many layers you have, or um, in this case it's, it's likely the aerial imagery that's making it cause, take a long time. At this point, you should see a page layout for your first grid of your index. You can scroll through the different pages on the data-driven pages toolbar. So first you want to switch to the page layout view. And you'll notice my first grid is here. This is the first township on Pine Ridge. And I can scroll through the different pages. This is displaying. It's 35 north, 34 west and I can scroll through these different pages using the arrows. So some of the things you might format your map book uh, is setting up your margins. So the right and left, bottom and top. I've left some space at the bottom to put a, a north arrow and a map scale text. So you can also include page numbers. Mine were already in here, but this is where you use the dynamic page text. So I'm going to have a data-driven page number. That's going to appear really small right there. And then up here is the label, which I added before I did the example, but the data-driven page name. Or you can also include data-driven page with count. So I'm just going to have the standard page number down here. And these numbers will change automatically on each page, and so will the page name. So you want to make sure that all of your, while it's in this page view, you want to make sure that all your, your labels are the right size. 
Okay, once you're satisfied with the formatting, be sure to uh, click the refresh button to make sure those changes apply to all the different pages. And then you're ready for printing. And to do that, you go to File, Export Map, and you'll want to choose your resolution and image quality. Um, just for the sake of this demonstration, I set that pretty low so it would uh, output fast. Um, and you'll want to be sure that you have it checked for all pages. In this case, I have 146 pages. And then you're ready. And this could take uh, quite a while depending on the number of pages and the amount of data on each page. Using the magic of video, I will fast forward to this. Now that you've created your map book, you might want to create an index that allows users to easily find specific features in the map book. For my book, I wanted to make it easy for people to find specific tracts of land located in the land class layer. These tracts of land have a unique tract ID number in the data field. Ideally, I would like people to be able to search this list in a numerical order and then see the corresponding page numbers or township and range name. The DS Mapbook plugin that was available for the older version of ArcMap generated this automatically, exporting it as a CSV file. Unfortunately, data-driven pages does not have this valuable tool. However, there is still several ways to create an index. One simple way to generate a Mapbook grid is to do a simple join of data from two or more layers. For example, to create a list of tract ID numbers and their corresponding townships, I would use the following procedure. First, right click on the land class feature and select joins and relate. Next you want to choose join data from another layer based on spatial location. So what I want to do is select all the I want to have it join township data that those uh, individual parcels fall in. So if you're an individual parcel and you fall within a ta particular township, it's going to join that data to your uh, data table. So here I'm going to choose Pine Ridge Townships as the layer to join to this layer. Next I want to select the radio button for each polygon will be given the attribute of the polygon it falls completely inside of if the layer of the layer being joined. Next I want to choose an output location. So I'm going to just add this to the land class folder I have. So I'm going to have I'm going to call this join land class and township just to make it clear. And then you hit export. This will automatically add this new layer to ArcMap. Of course, we're not going to use it as a layer. We're just using it to extract the table from it, the data table. Okay. 
Okay, and you can see it added it as these blue layers, but of course we've already generated our map book, so it doesn't matter. Uh, then I want it to see the new layers it added. So here we have the data from the land class layer, and then at the end it's going to append on all the data from the township layer. And you can see down here the labels that appear. So now all I need to do is open up this data table, which all I do is add, locate that file within Microsoft Excel or a spreadsheet program and open up the DBF file. And the DBF file is just a spreadsheet file and I can extract out these layers that I, these uh, fields that I want. So I, for my index I'm going to want label and I'm going to want tracked ID. And I just delete all these columns out of there and sort them based on tracked ID number and it's going to give me the corresponding label. And if I wanted I could autom easily add a page number to this. So that is how you create an index for a map book.